I was holding them up and the house would have been blessed and their kids would have been blessed and they would have been blessed too just on my back but God did not want that so God, God kept trying to get me not to go back to that house and I kept, they kept asking for help so I would go back and help them but well, God must want me to help them because they're Christians right that's what I said for 10 years See, most people think I'm not a game. James is just ghetto and just angry and evil. There's not, there's not the one evil bone in my body. I take more people and people than most people give in a day. They would have been blessed because I was there, not hurt. I'm going somewhere. It's not because I'm not. That's why I didn't give names because I want y'all looking at names and making God shit out of gospel. This is gospel. This point back to Jesus and who he says you are. He does not call you to feel. Stay with me. See, they would have been blessed just because I was there. Because even while they were killing me, I was still operating in integrity. And so because of the fact that I was, if I had been sinning and they had been sinning, the whole family would have been guilty of sin and we would have all been kicked out into the cold. Life destroyed, right? We would have, we would have been affected. God would have come, God, if God had come in judgment for me, he would have come in everybody because we're all doing evil things to each other but that's not what was happening see a lot of us have to be careful because a lot of us carry that uh, nice syndrome and what it does is you end up helping people and praying for people and staying on their side and God told me in this season Jamie you don't pray for nobody unless I tell you to I go through that season often and why because people will ride you by the back of your prayers they ride me like Zorro and ask me to pray for them and I see things that are going on in people's lives and I see things that are coming up for people and when I ask you, can I help you? When I ask you, can I pray with you? When I ask you, can I do Bible study with you? That's for you. That ain't necessarily for me. Uh, but you take it on your back and you think that. Uh, hallelujah. That's the time for you to lean your back on me when you should be leaning your back. Uh, on the tree. You should be saying, yes, God, thank you. I appreciate it. Anybody that offers you Bible study, why would you turn that down? Anybody comes up to you and tells you, I want, I want to study the Bible with you. Why would you turn that down? That's an opportunity for your learner, each from each other, especially if you're dealing with uh, secret sins or saint sin syndrome or no sins. You could just be dealing with illness. Why do I walk around dealing with everything that I do in my body and I'm still able to walk around and keep my head high? Because of the fact that I'm smart. I know that confessing to my brother, James 5, 15 and 16, will lead me straight to healing. So even if I don't feel good in what's going on in me, I am still healing. That's why I'm I went to the, uh, the doctor today. He said, yes, you got a lot of pain. Yes, it's crazy up in your body. Yes, this is a crazy situation. And we still don't get how this happened to you or why this happened to you. This is weird, but you are still healing. And his PA, he wasn't there Tuesday. His PA told me Tuesday. He said, it's hard to stop when anybody says, he said, you are still improving. I said, but I, he said, but I, but I, but I, but you still improving. I want you to remember this. You're still improving. He just kept telling me that, but you're still improving. Because the Jones fracture really is supposed to last anywhere from eight months to three years. Because no matter how many times you heal, the bone just keeps breaking itself and breaking itself. Because there's no oxygen getting to it. So now I gotta go back on vitamin D. What? 10,000 IUs a week or 50,000 IUs a week. That's what it was. 50,000 IUs a week. But I'm still healing. <laughs> Even if I have not completely healed, I'm in the process of healing. They are seeing, they said three months, we still saw the break in your foot. It was so completely broken. Remember? He said, I looked at it, it was completely broken. But, uh, <laughs> but now, he said you got bubble formation over it. Remember, even though it's not healed yet, and we need you to cat scan because we think that something's going on underneath the surface of it. Even though the, the bone outside is starting to heal over where the fracture actually was, which is how fractures actually have to heal, they still think that something's breaking inside. That is my foot started breaking from the inside. Hallelujah! And something attacked me and caused my foot to break from the inside out. To blah, 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 start cracking like glass. Satan the Lord rebuke you. Satan the Lord rebuke you. I laugh at you. You dispute. Because <laughs> that's a spiritual attack. God said, keep your mouth off of people and stay away from people that have the mouth on them. Because when people speak against people, you don't know how my body's set up to take suffering. And I may not suffer at the hand at the hands of your mouth, right? At the hands of your words specifically. But if my body's set to suffer, um, I'm in sickness, right? I'm in, in suffering that way. I have fibromyalgia, and so my body breaks down muscularly, right? So if my body breaks down that way, and you got your mouth on me. Don't be surprised if you don't see me hands and feet starfish because you spoke against. Me. Don't be surprised. But watch your, watch your back. <laughs> I hear God right now. Watch your back. 
We are going somewhere with it. We are going somewhere with it. Watch your back. Watch your spiritual, natural, and physical back. Why? Because Jonah's back ended up on the ground. Oh, uh, what happened? I, I, I leaned on the plant. Where's the plant, Jesus? <laughs> he was here last night. Where is it? I didn't, who told Jonah to camp out there? Jonah was not the monitor for the Holy Spirit, nor is he Holy Spirit Junior to monitor whether those people take the word that God gave them. He gave the word up, and it took him long enough to do that. And you're going to go outside the city and watch to wait for it, not to see if they uh, accept the word, but to see if their God breaks their back. Uh, and you are sitting and watch for their destruction. He wanted God to destroy them. He wanted the word to come to them and destroy them. Otherwise, what he would have done, all right, is help them. Uh, because there's no way in the world they should have ended up in sackcloth and ashes. Uh, the gospel comes to bring joy. We have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. So Jonah's testimony should redeem them. He got to the prophet to them. He did not send a, 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 a what was the obituary person. He did not send a, a, somebody to do a funeral. He did not send a casket. He did not send a hearse to them. He sent a prophet to tell he was trying to save them then, to help them get their souls saved. He was trying to get them to get themselves together. When God tried, when God is looking to save you, why do you put on sackcloth and ashes? I said something happened because the Bible transitions. They never the think that Jonah was nervous about it at first. Anyway, they never did. Damn! And then when he got there, they accepted the word quickly and repented to God. And then all of a sudden, you see him on the mountain. And then you find out that they were in sackcloth and ashes, and that they fasted. They turned to God and fasted. Jonah didn't tell them to fast. Jonah told them to put on sackcloth and ashes. They did it because they were sad. They were, they were bereaved in their spirit. So they, they, they called for, because God called for my redemption and freedom, and they called for the casket. When they realized they had sinned against God, the, uh, to the and then the right to the Assyrians couldn't do nothing but call for a casket. I, I, I called for a casket. When I sin against you, God, I called for a casket. Because that's all I deserve. When I confess God, I call for a casket. I've always been morbid and called. Smith always told me, James, so morbid and called. My sister's always saying, because I was talking about going to heaven. I would pack a suitcase and be ready to go because I wanted to go. I didn't care. I want to go. Shut up. I'm going. Where are you going? Heaven. <laughs> Six. Stop going to heaven. I'm serious. I didn't think about how I was going to get there. I had my coat and my suitcase. So I believe that's long. I had my coat on. It's going to happen. I didn't look the casket. I was watching Henry Danger, and, and, and they, they had some. Uh, they, they all the family came home, and the house was a mess. The parents had a party, or the father had a party, and so um, the father said, "Do this uh, cleaning, do this cleaning, and all this stuff." And they said, "No, we want to do it." Piper said, "Henry said, no, we want to do it." So he said, and Henry looked at me, he said, "I and and do." I invoke the chore will. <laughs> I did not think about no chores, no no will. I nobody know no chores in my house. I gotta clean my house. So I gotta, I'm the cleaner of it. So no chores up in here. I got to do it. When the king comes in, I will still have to do it. Hopefully he will help me. I believe that he will. But that's not his job. God said he's a king, so he will go out and work and minister outside. But I'm about during the week. I'm supposed to make house for him. And so we gonna play house. And if we wanna have a nice game of house, we wanna play house and nice. And no chores, no no wills up in here. We gonna, gonna clean my house. I'm not just gonna make my house nice for him. It's gonna be my house is going to be peace. I'm already praying over whatever house I'm going to be in that it become peace for my king. I'm praying over. I'm praying coming. I'm praying over it for my my natural man and my spiritual man and my my mind, my will and my emotions and my 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 mind for my 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 soul. I invoke the blood of Jesus, right? Because of what Holy Spirit just said to me a couple of seconds ago. He as I was walking and talking about Henry Danger, he said, Jamie, invoking is not a witchcraft thing. What invoking basically means is that you call upon a service. That it's not that you deserve it, but it's a service you need. He says what you need, so you call upon it, but you gotta walk in it. I invoke here. Henry knew he was getting that chore will that day. His sister looked at him and said, "Henry, you fool!" But they still, they all knew because Henry invoked it. 
it. Henry got it. It wasn't something he deserved. He didn't deserve to be able to call for the true will. But I am both about the blood. And I don't deserve it. And I should be able to just get casket. But I deserve it. Casket, but I invoke her. Blood of Jesus, I invoke her. Redemption, I invoke her. A spiritual formation, I invoke a spiritual reformation. I invoke her. I'm a dean, I invoke her. By the blood of the Lamb, I invoke her. I invoke the word, huh? 